The second game, and the second game is by Angry Ape. First time I'm analyzing one of his games today, and actually we have two of his games. So let's get started. E4, D6. Knight f3, bishop g4. Okay, as you're saying also yourself here, you know that this is not the greatest opening setup. In the opening, usually what you want to do is to occupy the center, play d4 if you can, of course, and here your pawn allowed you to do so by going d6. So you can go d4 and then just develop your pieces, your minor piece, castle, and so on and so forth. So you're not really playing it that ambitiously here, going knight f3. And d3 is just not that ambitious, right? So, and you're white. You want to press. You want to move white. You want to do something. And uh, you're like, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not trying anything here. I'm just okay with getting a mediocre position, average, normal, and uh, then we'll see. Just, just try. Why not? Right? Go d4 and see what happens. Knight six, b3. Okay. Bishop e2, knight b2, g5, h3, bishop h5. Now you go bishop at b2, which is fine. Normal development move, right? We're following this principle of developing all your minor pieces. So you're doing a job, good job of that. But here you had also another move available, which is h4, making use of the fact that black has already kind of weakened himself on the king side. And um, usually, in those kind of positions, after h4, black would like to go g4. But after g4, you can go knight h2, hitting the pawn. And uh, the pawn cannot be protected as it is attacked three times and only defended once by the bishop. Black can take on h4, but after g3, he cannot go to h3 because of bishop f1, winning the queen. And if the queen retreats somewhere, I don't know, f6, you can take back on g4, you win back the pawn, but what we'll see here, and as we've also talked about in the first game, you have the better pawn structure now because black has more pawn islands, right? The pawn h6 is a weakness, it cannot be defended by a pawn anymore. So this has improved your structure, you also have this square available for your pieces on f5, it's weakened, and this has been a good transformation. So g4, uh, h4, interesting move and uh, to kind of loosen up the pawns here. If black just goes bishop g7, you can take on g5, follow with knight f1, and again, hit this pawn on g5, and um, black already has to make some compromises here to his position. So just something to look out for in this kind of pawn structure. h4 is often a typical move to kind of loosen it up and force your opponent to do some concessions. All right, so bishop b2, queen e7. Here he had a good chance, good moment to do something, to win a pawn, in fact. You play g4, and um, that's not really helping your position because you're doing the same thing that your opponent is doing. You're weakening some squares. You're making it easier maybe to, for your opponent to attack you on the king side to open up the position there. You had a very typical strike here, the move knight takes e5. Something to always look out for with this constellation of the queen and the bishop here uh, and the bishop on this diagonal, it's very typical to have this knight takes e5 move. So, knight takes e5, why does this work? Because well, if black just takes back, which he has to actually, you can take the piece on h5 and you have one upon, plus you have the bishop pair. This is a superb position already. And if black takes on e2, then you can go knight takes c6. And now it's perfect that your bishop is on b2, because after bishop takes d1, we have a queen trade. But the problem for black is that also his rook is hanging on h8. Even if the rook wasn't hanging, if the rook was, let's imagine, on h7, you would be still in good shape because if black takes back, you would just take back the piece. But here you can even take the rook, you're up in exchange and just winning. So, um, 
this was possible and what can i say about this well it's a little bit about experience pattern recognition right if you've seen this motive before now you've seen it then you'll recognize it easily more easily in the future um so it's a little bit about that and then the other is always just checking those those kind of moves those moves that take something that give a check to threaten something right those are my recommendations in terms of how to scan the positions for what moves to look for you want to look for moves that take something that give a check and that threaten something because those moves they force a reaction by your opponent your opponent has to react to these moves and of course checks are the most forceful moves of all because your opponent he has to react to a check he cannot just do something else right? so you always want to check those moves and here knight takes e5 was one of those candidate moves what are some other candidate moves just to go quickly through them bishop takes e5 knight takes g5 and what you play g4 right because it's attacking something your opponent has to react okay also i guess any move with this knight would be a candidate move because it's attacking the bishop and often you can just scan go over this moves very quickly and in this way you just make sure you don't miss any of those all right besides that even if there wasn't this move knight takes e5 in the position you could also just play in the move knight f1 and uh, just go for the weak f5 square right black has played both move pawns to g5 and e5 that means no pawn can defend the square on f5 anymore and you can just try to occupy the square um so knight f1 going to e3 going to g3 and then maybe later on you can try to occupy the square all right so that was also a good possibility here all right let's see the game g4 bishop g6 knight c4 bishop g7 queen d2 knight f6 castle b5 your opponent is playing very aggressively on both sides of the board pushing the pawns forward a5 here you go knight f5 which is possible but again this move h4 undermining the pawn chain on the king side and threatening to win a pawn obviously and black doesn't want to take because you take back and you're ready to jump to f5 with the knight but what else can black do if he moves the knight to protect this pawn you have knight e5 as an option which is quite strong also opening up um the path for the queen to attack the pawn and yeah i don't even know what black's supposed to do here maybe he has to take on h4 but he certainly doesn't want to and his attack with a4 it's a little bit slow yeah you take on g5 um you, you can just take back on g5 i mean not much is happening here right now right like black's attacking with one rook that's not gonna get it done okay so that was just something else to consider but also after knight f5 you get a nice position but here you make a mistake which is not that easy to to figure out actually you take with the g pawn it would have been better to take with the e pawn why is that because you want to open up the position with d4 and with the e pawn still here it's hanging obviously the knight could take it now it's not hanging you can just go if he goes a4 like he did in the game you can just go d4 and that's a general thing to do in these kind of situations anyway there's this rule of thumb if your opponent attacks on the wing or on the side as your opponent's doing here by going a5 b5 and so on you want to counter by opening up in the center and here specifically it makes sense especially because the black king is still in the center and it will not find a safe safe spot on the board right as black has already pushed up the pawns on the queen side and the king side the king will always be weak and will always also be weak in the center and if you open up the position in the center of course you can get an attack going against the king and if he castles short you can just play h4 and there will be a mate very soon okay so that's the difference between g takes and five and e takes a five not that easy to see but if we keep in mind this rule of thumb we'll get to it easier right if we remember we want to open up the center as soon as possible then we'll more quickly figure out okay we need to take back with the e pawn to be able to go d4 then all right 
g takes a4 and now you play h4 now we've talked about this a couple of times that h4 is often a typical move and it was often good in the past but here it's not good anymore unfortunately because what happens is right now the bishop on g7 is terrible right bishop on g7 is not participating in the game at all it's just blocked by its own pawns behind the pawn chain but by going h4 you allow black or you kind of force black to activate his bishop and put his bishop on a, on a nice diagonal here the c1 h6 diagonal so this is just helping black what you want to do here as one possibility is to still go d4 in fact because you also what i didn't mention actually a moment ago by playing d4 you're opening up this diagonal threatening to win the pawn b5 so this is nice um, you can go after this pawn and um, after knight takes e4 queen e1 you threaten bishop takes b5 and again it's this theme of opening up the position against the king in the center okay all right let's see the game h4 g4 knight h2 h5 right and suddenly the bad bishop has a task can come to h6 and threatens to win the queen right now and actually you're writing that you didn't see this you played rook dg1 and after bishop h6 you resigned and then your opponent said position is so interesting let's play something else and we'll keep playing okay so yeah that's also something that comes with experience and also like you're saying yourself um one of your great weaknesses is that you look too much at your own moves and too little at your opponent's moves and you have difficulties when there are too many pieces on the board you kind of lose um your the the overview of the position so what can you do to improve that well one thing you can always ask yourself is what is my opponent threatening that can always be your first question in any position when it's your move okay and it will get your mind in the right direction if you just ask yourself what does my opponent want to play next if it was his move what would be his next move simple and i think that will already help you to see more and then with the that you have difficulties when there are too many pieces on the board it's normal right it just takes time and i recommend you to solve tactics and to also get those different motives in your head, right? I mean, if in a situation like this, when my opponent plays h5, I immediately see this option of him going bishop h6 next because I've seen it so many times, right? So many times have I seen this, um, this score with the bishop on h6 against the queen. It's just pattern recognition, again, like I said. So what you want to do is solve a lot of tactics and get those patterns into your head okay let's continue with the game king b1 i'll check the chat real quick all right i see angry abe is also in the chat that's great um let's see the pawn on e5 e4 yeah we talked I think you meant the position of the d4 and yeah like i said you can actually give this pawn but of course this is already like advanced stuff right uh going back to this position allowing black to take a pawn of tempo doesn't look that attractive i know but um you can go queen e1 here and threaten to take on b5 next move and of course that's advanced stuff i mean you could also play something else here after a4 I don't know maybe just king b1 it's always like a move that's itching me to play just because my king feels like the king's better placed here on b1 yeah 
that would be another move. All right, let's keep going. King b1, takes, takes, knight d7, rook c1, is again running into this bishop h6 score, right? This time not with the king and the queen, so it's not that bad, but it's still an exchange. And um, it would be bad for you, of course. Um, surprisingly, your opponent also doesn't play it. Mm, and he goes knight db8. Of course, still the threat of bishop h6, but okay. You did not see it. The problem with rook hg1 though is that it's just leaving this pawn h4 abandoned. Um, you could play rook c2, which would also go out of this threat, of course. And um, Well, now after queen takes h4, you could probably play queen c1. Yeah. Well, this is kind of advanced stuff again. You're threatening rook takes c6. Um, and if the knight moves, you can go rook takes c7. And after bishop h6, you can go knight takes g4. Which is, of course, not an easy tactic to calculate. Anyways, uh, the point I want to make, actually, even if you play something else here. Hmm, rook d1, maybe? The point is that here, of course, black cannot take because now after knight takes g4, your rook is protected. And you will win back the pawn. And it's good. But after rook hg1 besides this bishop h6 problem there's also queen takes h4 with your pawn played and you sacrifice the piece now but you will not get enough compensation right um, a piece is a piece and you're not having enough here for the piece black's position is too solid bishop h6 okay here you go queen d1 you could have also gone f4 but positions lost here either way. King d7, queen f1, bishop f4. Okay, and here and also the next move, so you could take on f4, right? And use this pin um, and win back the piece. It comes back once again to those candidate moves, just checking moves that take something, but also have to have this visualization, I guess, that if he takes back, now suddenly your bishop gets open and you can take the queen. It's practice. Like I said, it's just solving a lot of exercises and um, getting that experience. D4, B4, D5. Now again, rook takes F4, of course. Bishop B5, check. C6. Now you take with the bishop. I'm not sure why you do that because uh, you can also take with the pawn. You keep your bishop. Your bishop is nice. Keep your bishops if you can. Uh, there's a pin, and pins are also nice. You want to have your opponent in pins. That's usually a good thing. And of course, here rook takes f4 again works. But even if rook f4 doesn't work, you rather want to keep your bishop. Why not? You can also still exchange later if you want to. But right now, there's no need. Okay? So, in general, keep your bishops unless there's a reason not to. And pin. Pin your opponent as much as possible. Winning by pinning, which is also the theme of the next move. Now you finally spotted it. Uh, it wasn't too late and you win back the piece and you're much better now. And the rest of the game is pretty effortless. Here I was a little bit confused why you didn't play the queen straight to d5, um, which you do the next move. So usually, you, if there's if there's no reason to not do it, then just do it, right? And there's queen d5, just perfectly fine. Hitting an opponent f7, active position. Put your piece in active positions if you can. We'll also see this in the next game a little bit. So queen d3, rook c8, queen d5, knight e7 takes, queen d2, but black doesn't really have an attack going. You recognize that, gives one last check, and you're your attack is too strong and here your opponent resigned 
you can checkmate in various ways rook g8 f takes c7 and so on all right so what can we take from this game i think for you what will just lead to major major improvement in your play is when you do more tactics and um and learn to spot these little tactics right those are very little tactics we're talking about here this bishop h6 move this rook takes f4 move in the opening this knight takes e5 move okay those are things that you split that you'll spot in seconds if you do some tactics if you just train this for however much time you want to dedicate right whether it's 15 minutes a day half an hour a day maybe it's just i don't know one hour a week but the time that you put towards chess i would highly recommend you to put it towards tactics that will just get you the biggest benefit for your time spent okay um and there are various ways to do tactics to uh, train tactics there are lots of tactics trainers online whether chess.com chess24 chess tempo uh, has a free tactic trainer which is really big big i mean there are a lot of lot 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 of exercises um this, that's one way to do them online another way would be to get a book just i don't even have to give you any specific book title it doesn't really matter as long as the tactics are not too difficult uh, you can just do a google search or amazon and uh, you can solve them out of the book or you can get an app which is also very nice instead of i don't know of course i don't know if you do this but i see a lot of people playing candy crush or whatever uh in the in the metro instead of doing that you can solve some tactics on the go right when we have some spare time and that's also a way to train your mind to see those uh tactics quicker um so those are some ways if you want to put in some more effort then it's i recommend that you actually set it up on a board because that will also like train uh your mind to find those over the board i don't know how much chess you play over the board anyways but if you do then that's preferred because um you will be better at actually finding it in a 3d on a 3d chessboard rather than if you look at it uh, in a book or on the internet on your phone where it's always 2d of course so that's what i recommend and now 